Hey everyone, how are we doing today? This is James Sweeney, aka Split Suit, and welcome back to another video. And as part of the Ask Split Suit a Question series, a bunch of people asked hand history questions. This one actually came via Facebook. And Christian just says, Hello Split Suit, love your videos. I would like to hear your opinion about this hand. It was from a 330 Deep Stack MTT on Stars. We had a bit of history with the button. I had 3-bet him a couple times previously, but we never got to showdown. I thought he was decent. Okay, so at this stage in the game, the blinds are 100-200 with a 20 ante. It folds around to the button who opens for a min-raise. We have king-queen off in the small and decide to 3-bet. And it said, you know, you mentioned that you've been 3-betting him a little bit so far. I'd be very careful 3-betting here if you think that he's going to start adjusting by 4-balling. Because if he 4-bets, do I really want to rip it? You know, I have to make that decision right this moment. So if you guys have been warring and you've been 3-betting him a lot, ask yourself, you know, okay, is he adjusting? And if so, how? If he's just the kind of guy that's going to call your 3-bets, whatever. If he's the kind of guy that's going to start 4-betting your 3-bets, though, you need to have that plan of attack now. Especially in a tournament when it's one life to live, when you have shorter stack sizes typically you know make sure you have that plan but as for the three bet itself i can totally be okay with it just again be aware of the dynamic we end up getting called go heads up to it end up flopping gut shot over cards and a flush drop sweet so we decide to continuation bet and this is one of those spots where you could consider a check raise. I think the stack sizes are a little bit odd for a check raise because if you check and he bets for like 15, you check raise to what, like 4.4? It's not the cleanest thing in the entire world. So it's just one of those where if I don't love a check raise, typically I'm just going to go with my traditional continuation bet, go from there. End up getting called. Okay. End up improving to the nut card on a turn. Can't complain about that. And we decide to double barrel for 2.7. Okay, so at this stage in the game, a double barrel is okay, certainly something that we could consider doing, but I'd also like to pause for a moment and consider going for a check raise instead. So this is the kind of situation where I ask myself, okay, what kind of hands did he call my 3-bet with? And obviously these are all questions I asked myself earlier, I just didn't ask them out loud in the video, but in my head when I'm playing a hand like this, I'm always asking myself these kind of questions. What was his range when he called my 3-bet? What kind of range would he have called my continuation bet with? Again, viewing the dynamic of you guys have been worrying a little bit does that widen his ranges or tighten his ranges and i'm typically going to assume it's going to widen them so i assume that when he gets to the turn he's going to hit this board some percentage of the time if he has a monster flush whatever i'm not super worried about that to be honest because i assume that he would have four bet with ace kings that nukes out ace king of spades we have the queen so we can't have ace queen of spades which then puts up ace jack of spades and then does he really have like ace eight of spades or ace seven of spades i think that's certainly up for debate so the fact that we have the Queen of Spades in our hand is actually a really, really vital card because it nukes out pretty much all the flushes that he could realistically have. You know, unless he's calling things like 8-7 of spades and stuff prefob, which is possible, but there aren't a ton of them. So like given the exact texture, given the exact hand that we have, it's very difficult for him to have a made flush. So definitely make sure you keep that in mind. So all of that said, I'm not really worried about that. What I'm thinking, though, is that he's going to have things like one pair. I think he could have something maybe like an ace-queen. I think there are definitely hands like that in his range. And I think that if I check, he's probably going to bet with a lot of it. I don't think he's just going to check this behind and let a four straight or four flush roll off on the river for no reason. So I can check raise, apply a lot of pressure, can look a little confusing, and can really maximize a lot of value. Whereas I'm not necessarily sure going for three streets here is always going to work out that great it's not that i'm fearful of going three streets of value here it's just i think that a check raise here could certainly be better now i'm going to preface that all by saying i'm not a tournament player but this is a deeper stacked hand in the sense of you know for a tournament i think we started this with give or take like 75 big blinds and as far as i'm concerned that's close ish to a cash game so i'm going to keep that kind of mindset in mind but if this is incorrect from a tournament standpoint i'm all ears we can definitely have a conversation about it but i feel pretty comfortable going for a check raise i think regardless of what he called the flop with whether he called the flop with one pair, whether he called the flop with something like King Jack and he just improved to a jack on the turn, whether he was just totally messing around on the flop or just has the naked ace of spades, I think he's going to bet pretty much all of that when I check to him. And because of that, I really like check raising. 
So that's just kind of the long, long road of saying consider a check raise, or at least heavily consider a check raise here. I'm not going to fault the double barrel. I don't think that it's wrong. I don't think it's bad. I just think that it's suboptimal. So in this situation, we end up getting called cool, and the river is a very, very interesting jack of spades. Okay, so in this situation, Hero decides to check, and I want to talk about this for a minute because I feel like some players would definitely check here because this isn't like a black and white value bet, right? It's not like if we bet here, we're getting looked up by a tremendous amount of second best, and we could just end up value towning ourselves against the ace of it or the king of it and just end up screwing ourselves. So we're in a situation here where I first ask myself, okay, are there any like nut combos? Well, I don't think there's going to be any boats. I don't think there's going to be any quads. I think that if he had pocket tens, that he raises out on the flop a lot. Same thing with pocket nine. Same thing with jacks. I think there's a decent probability he would have just four bet that preflop. So I don't really think he has anything like that. And even if he has something like jack ten, would he have considered raising a turn? I think there's certainly a consideration for that, especially again given exactly how wet that turn card is. So because of that, I don't think there's any like boat or quad combos so then it's like okay are there any nut flushes and there are a couple combos of it for sure you have to ask yourself would this person have played the ace of trump very aggressively on the flop and i'd say some players certainly will and when there's an aggro dynamic i think it's very realistic to assume that he would have or could have done that and then i say okay well what if he had like the king of it well if he has the king of it how is he going to make it because I don't think he has his king. If he has king queen, wouldn't he have raised the turn? So if he has a king of it, it'd be like a pair plus the king of it. And then it's like, okay, would he have raised the flop if he had like king 10 with the king of spades? And I think, that, again, there's a decent chance of that. So this is a weird situation because there's just not a tremendous amount of combos of big hands. And same kind of concept with like ace x, right? Again, I think he probably doesn't have ace king. I think he four bets that preflop. And then we're back to very few combos of like monster ace x hands. And this is just kind of an awkward situation. So I honestly would just value bet the river and just bet it out for something like... 4.4, I think that's totally fine. And to be honest, I don't expect to get looked up very often. I expect he's going to fold things like 10x and 9x and all that kind of stuff. And I'm okay with that, to be totally honest. I don't think there's a lot of nut flush combos or big flush combos. And if he folds, I don't have to show my hand. And that's a really great place to be, right? I really like not having to show my hand because then he gets no information about me. And that's a great, great, great thing if you've never thought about it conceptually before. So because of that, I'd probably just honestly bet here, expect he's going to fold a lot and be done with it. And that also creates a situation where you then don't have to worry about checking, facing a bet, and then trying to dig yourself out. Because you could easily make some serious mistakes calling this bet because you have no idea if he double floats this texture a lot or what his range looks like, and you could easily end up calling into something, whereas you could easily have just bet folded if you had played it the other way. So in this situation, I mean, yeah, we're getting a great price at roughly three to one, and Hero does decide to, to dig that call out, but I think at this point, we're just going to end up value towning ourselves, right? If he were bluffing, would he bluff for half pot or would he just shove and put our entire tournament life at risk? You know, I think there's a, a much higher chance that he would just jam if he was bluffing. So I don't really love it, right? I think that Again, there aren't a ton of nut combos, but there certainly are some ace x in there occasionally and some king x of spades in there occasionally. I don't think he would necessarily bluff for this size, which pushes more of like, again, the, the thin, weird, thin in terms of not a tremendous number of combos of slightly bigger hands in his range. I just don't think he bluffs like this. So because of that, I'm not shocked when we end up running into something like this. Now, I am shocked that it's ace-king. 
I didn't think it was going to be Ace King. I thought that would have four bet preflop. And I would definitely make sure that I take a note on this individual that even though you guys have been warring, he still didn't four bet Ace King. Definitely a note to take. But ultimately, again, I think we could have played this hand better. I think the check raise on the turn is a really, really sexy option. And, you know, enough players just don't consider taking that line often enough. But there's so much validity for it, especially when you're like, okay, I think this person's going to float the flop a decent amount. Cool. So just check bang it in his face and make him make a difficult decision. So, again, a lot of discussion here and... Again, I'm not a tournament player, so I'm not going to claim that this is like necessarily perfect tournament advice, but I still think that the turn check raise discussion is super, super crucial. And the river betting decision is really important. You know, again, too many players just go into this like black and white mode where, oh, well, if I bet the river, I'm never getting looked up by second best combos, so I can't bet it. When in all actuality, you could probably make a thinnish bet. You're not going to get a tremendous amount of value, but that's okay. Put him in a difficult decision, right? Make him find a hero call at 10x or make him make some difficult bluff raise on the river, right? Don't just always allow him to control it. You check to him, you give him the keys, you know, you're just asking to put yourself into a really bad spot. So Christian, thanks for the great hand. And if you or anyone else has a poker related hand or question, feel free to leave it on our Google Plus page. Leave a link for that in the description box. And also please make sure to like and subscribe if you're enjoying this type of video. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to let me know. Otherwise, good luck out there and happy grinding.